Sister, if you're talking, you're talking on mute. Sister Ale. I didn't know I was supposed to be talking. <laughs> it's your testimony. Yeah. You were going to give a test oh, is testimony. It okay, it's time. It's time. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so you can hear me all good? Yes, loud and clear. Do you want me to turn the camera on or it doesn't matter? Well, we'd love to see you, but it yes, doesn't matter. We'd love to see your beautiful face. I've got a black face mask on. Yes. No, I don't really. I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Um, so I go to a place twice a week called the Healing Rooms, and um, they uh, obviously they work with the Holy Spirit, and and it's it's sort of like I guess if you were to think about it in worldly terms, it would be like going to a counselor or going counselling. But we but this is much more powerful, obviously, because we're doing it um, under the anointing of, of Jesus. So I go twice a week um, and I've had a lot of breakthroughs um, with a lot of different things that I've um, needed healing for. And so I went in on Tuesday and it's hard to, it's hard to like contain my excitement with this, <laughs> but um, so I went in on the Tuesday and um, I said to them, so I've had, just to backtrack a little bit, I've had stomach stuff going on for like a really long time. Um, and Dodie and Charlotte will know about that because I've run them crying and in the middle of the night and all sorts of stuff because of it hurting. And um, I, I didn't know what to think of it. I, I didn't know whether it was personal sin. I didn't know whether it was just food intolerances in general, whether it was, um, I don't know. I just didn't know what, it, what the root of it was. And, um, yeah, like obviously when you've had, when you've been sick for such a long, well not, in the, in terms of sickness, it wasn't like the worst sickness you could have. So, but it was still really, it's been a really frustrating journey because I've spent hundreds of, well, thousands of dollars on naturopaths and um, different vitamins and um, staying on strict diets. And it seemed to be no matter what I ate, even if it was like really healthy, I was having these reactions in my stomach all the time. But um, so I went to the healing rooms on the Tuesday and I said to them, look, they said, what, what would you like Jesus to do for you today? And I was like, well, you know, my stomach is still really hurting. Can we pray about that? Um, I said, look, I don't know what it is, whether it's, you know, the fact I'm drinking coffee and shouldn't be, or, you know, all sorts of things. So I went through all of that with them and they said, okay, well, how about we just ask the Lord, <laughs> which is way more simpler than trying to work it out ourselves. Um, so I, sorry, I'm getting notifications popping up. Um, so I said, okay, let's just, let's lift it up. Let's ask the Lord what's going on. So, you know, we, you know, lifted it up to him and um, the lady who was praying, so there's usually a few people in the room, she said to me, this is going to sound strange, but the Lord's given me this. At three years old, three months and three days, um, something occurred that brought in a, like a spirit of fear and you were, you were so young that that shock and that terror of that situation it kind of froze you at that age um, when it comes to fear. So like my responses to, to situations now when there isn't, when maybe I'm, I'm sensing fear where there isn't fear. So they said, because of that, with fear, your stomach muscles, they, they tighten and they clench and obviously you're not digesting food properly and things like that. But they were strongly getting that it was related to fear. And so then they said, well, we'll ask the Lord if we need anything specific, but um. I started getting sort of visions in the spirit of just fighting around me and things like that. So it was obviously related to parents um, being violent with each other and things like that. And when you're so young and don't understand it, it's quite, quite a scary um, thing to witness. And um, yeah, it, it does, it causes like a fragment in your soul because you 
are so young and it's so hard it's hard for you to process things that are, that are obviously not of god um and so what they did was they walked me through sort of forgiving my parents for the arguing and for, for that fear that they had instilled in me um and so they asked me obviously to just imagine yourself as a young girl and you're handing over these these things to jesus and so straight away in the spirit i saw the lord standing there and he just had this grin on like smile on his face like it's okay you can hand it over so i'm handing a few things over and they're saying what are you seeing and i said look i'm i'm handing a few things over but my hand is behind my back and there's something like i'm holding and um so they said okay well let's just ask the lord what that is and so um they said so the Lord was showing them that there was secrets as in like sometimes parents will, will tell children not to tell the other side of the family certain things or, and so in, in the, in the midst of obviously the fear of seeing what I was seeing, I was also sort of being told about, you know, told not to tell certain things, which is also quite a heavy burden on kids because that then they fear getting punished and all that kind of stuff. So then I reluctantly handed that like in the spirit, the three-year-old me handed those things over to the Lord. Um, and anyway, since then, no stomach issues whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. Um, I've drunk coffee. I've had things that normally would totally hurt my stomach and just nothing. And um, when that, if that fear thing tries to come up, because obviously if you've exercised a muscle, especially if it's not of God, it's still going to try and rear its ugly head. and um, I've just said no fear you're not you know you're dealt with now and um yeah just no no none of that stomach stuff is happening so to me it's just incredible because I've had it since I was such a small girl like I remember being in a ball in bed and like just having some toast and just reacting to that and just I was getting I was just starting to really lose hope with my stomach and I really think there's been a massive breakthrough with that and um Anyway, the, the most beautiful part about it is that only the Lord could go into that place and be so specific about when something happened. Um, but the next thing I'll say is that it was actually prophetic to Jeremiah 33, 3. So, like, hence, I was three years old, three months, three days. So I'll read you um, Jeremiah 33, 3. Give me a sec. Um, I've actually got my Bible now and I'm not reading from the phone, which is so good. <laughs> Amen. So it says, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So basically that's that's so beautiful because he he showed these people and and me great and mighty things I didn't know about my stomach that I would have never known if it wasn't for the Lord. Like, no, I'm getting emotional saying this. in a good way. <laughs> um, no counsellor, no psychologist, like the love of God is just so beyond our comprehension. Like yeah. he can he can go back into places that we have been completely buried that we would have gone our whole lives not even knowing about if it wasn't for how much he loves us and wants to like restore us. So um I wanted to share that to know, to just say that like if there's something that you've had for a long time or like um, you've lost hope in a certain area, God has not lost hope. And sometimes it's like you, for me, it's been like peeling layers off an onion and like he, he, he reveals stuff and he slowly just restores us back to, you know, who he created us to be in the first place. And, um, you know, sometimes he has got to take off other layers before we get to, the particular layer that he and sometimes you know we're just blocked by, by our own inability to you know unbelief you know all that kind of thing so um i just want to encourage you if you've had you've been sick for a long time or you've um you've lost hope in a certain area i don't know whether it's like with family or whatever no without a shadow of a doubt the lord's got it it just may not be in the way that you would expect because that was totally unexpected for me. Like I thought it could be to do with anxiety and stuff, but I, I had no idea that it was something that happened to me when I was such a small girl. So 
Um, I've drunk coffee and I've had things that I thought, like, obviously I'm still healthy. I'm not silly about it, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that, encourage you guys that, um, the Lord's got every situation, even the things that we think he doesn't care about. He cares about the smallest things. Um, and actually I'll read one other verse that relates to that as I, um, uh, before I finish, uh, let me just find it here. Okay. Um, so it says, you've, you've searched me and you've known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts are far off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and you're acquainted with all my ways for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, Lord, you know it all together. You've hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. And if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, <laughs> Ooh, I'm feeling the anointing on this. <laughs> Even there you shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. And if I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light. Indeed, the darkness shall hide from you, but the night shines as the day and the darkness and light are both alike. This is a bit I want to say the most. For you formed my inward parts and you covered me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet they were none of them. When I, uh, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they should be more than the num uh, more in number than the sand. And when I awake, I'm still with you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Very good. Thank you. Um, and there was something else, Eloise, remember? that day when all these things were happening with you then you looked at and you were telling me these things and then the verse of the day popped up remember oh yes yes oh my gosh okay so <laughs> i was telling Dodie, and it was like it's it's so amazing because the lord's like always listening to to us always like listening to our com like it's just funny when you get confirmation of how close he really is um so i went in and looked at my verse of the day just after i told Dodie this um hang on i've got to go in and find it um me and dodie message a lot so i have to scroll through a lot of stuff it's exodus okay. 23 25 yeah. yeah that's it so exodus 23 25 this is immediately almost the same time i told dodie this it says and i will take sickness away from the midst of you and then underneath it says one of the blessings god has for us is health sickness is not part of his plan for your future in his goodness, he wants to come and remove sickness from our lives. Believe for divine health and trust him to protect and heal you. And then, so I'll just say a prayer for all of us now. <laughs> Lord, thank you for the many blessings you make available to us. And now I pray and ask you to protect me and everyone in this room and our household. And I ask you to remove sickness from our lives and from our families. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But yeah, it was a, it, it's a big deal. I mean, I know it's not like cancer or anything crazy like that, but to have something for such a long, like a chronic thing for such a long time. And honestly, I'd be in tears. I, it was not good. I thought, what have, what kind of, what sins have I committed? Like I tried just going through all, so many things, but sometimes it's mostly, a lot of the time, it's a matter of healing our hearts because the Lord is like way more interested in our hearts than he is in our physical stuff. And like once our hearts are, are healed, um, our body follows suit, you know, that's, Amen. you know, why that body soul spirit thing is so important that we learned about a couple of weeks ago. Amen. 
Amen. But yeah, everyone's talking with this coronavirus, everyone's talking about sanitising their hands and being clean and all this, but I think we should focus on sanitising our hearts and our lives, you know. Thanks, John. But um, it is still important to do that, of course. But um, yeah, bless you guys. Amen. Thank you, sister. I'm going to stop the recording now. Praise God.